Good morning. We're going to shell corn today. We're going to dry corn today. It's going to be a good day. We may run some beans this afternoon. We'll see. Um, Phil had some stuff going on this morning, so we are going to get the dryer fired up. First thing we got to do is go out and check the um, oil and fire up our generator so we can have some electricity. That's important for running a dryer. Oil looks good. So we do run a generator to produce power for our grain system for most things. Um, the big motors and everything. I will explain this sometime in better detail, but essentially we're the last house on the power line and we cannot get enough power from the power company to power everything that we need uh, without it costing a ridiculous amount of money. So we, we bought a generator and make our own power. All right, let's get some stuff fired up in here. Dryer master's on, so this switch turns on our grain handler control panel. And then we can come out here. Turn on our dry leg. We should check, make sure we're in the right bin. Overhead, that is what we want. Our sticker fell off, but we wrote it up on there. And then I think we're ready to go. Hit the um, run switch, turn on the Hot fans, which starts up the fans underneath, two by two by two. Okay, now we are ready for the fuel control that starts our burner up. It takes a half a minute or so to purge the gas line and, and get flame. Now, yeah, I definitely blew all the dust out. Or we're working on it, I guess. Once this comes up and says five volts there, we know we've got flame. And there it is, five volts. Okay, now we have two minutes to push this button. We're just gonna push that button. That starts the unload process. So there are, um, there are metering rolls that run the entire length of the dryer that are turning right up there and those drop corn down into the drag the drag takes it down to the cross drag the cross drag brings it down and dumps it into the leg the leg takes it up and we are filling the overhead right now we're gonna haul dry corn out so that's what we're doing so everything out there is running the way it needs to now we come in here and we can watch our uh, drying temperature come up to temp we should get up to 200 degrees and uh, the rate there is 800. That's just kind of what it's manually set at. Once it gets up to temperature, it should go back into auto mode where it will control it automatically. All right, we are up to temperature at 202. You can see the ready light came on, so we're gonna hit this mode button and request automatic two. We want our moisture to be 15 coming out and off it goes, so. We're good here. We just need to kind of keep an eye on it and watch it. And um, our overhead bin is about half full, it sounds like, looks like. So uh, we don't want to overfill that. When it gets full, we'll probably just shut the dryer down, to be honest. I'm not sure what the last thing I filmed was. I'm pretty sure everything was all peachy then, though. <laughs> Things change around here, mostly when you make stupid mistakes. Right? So you see... Um, See that motor right there? There's a couple of belts on that motor. That motor spins an auger. It's 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 that auger over there that's pulling corn out of the wet bin. So when you, the dryer calls for wet corn, it turns that auger on, right? Well, do you know where that corn comes out of that auger and where it has to go? It, it, it has to go up the wet leg. And do you know what has to happen for the corn to go up the wet leg? The wet leg has to be on. I may have missed a step. We burn up a couple belts, we wasted an hour, going to find belts, get them fixed, all good now, all back up and running. Phil's around, he's gonna haul dry corn, Rock's around, he's gonna run a grain cart, I'm gonna go shell corn, we're just waiting for that wet to kick on one more time just so I can make sure everything's good here, but everything should be good, just yeah, stupid mistakes. Oh, 
Yay, it's running. Okay, we're good. We can go shell corn. Phil's going to take a load out of the overhead, so it'll be not quite empty, but close enough that we can shell uh, a little bit of corn. So the way this is going to work, Brock and I are going to go, we're going to take that truck, and we're going to fill it and the grain cart up. And then we're going to have to stop and come over here and unload it. So it's just going to be a little bit of a slow process, but that's how it's going to work. He's driving it. Why is he driving it? He just said start it up. He just wants to drive the combine, that's all. All right, let's go do this. Things are a little damp here this morning. And due on the windshield, we should have parked the combine facing east. The snouts are on the head or wet, but it's okay. That stuff will dry up. It really doesn't affect the combine and corn. Um, corn doesn't get tough like soybeans and wheat do because you're not really running material through. You're just taking the ears and all the rest of the material goes right down through the bottom of the head. So uh, we, can, we can shell when it's wet. Just took a round to get our window dried off. That one's still got a little, little condensation on it though. Uh, last round of this one variety here, you can see on our map, um, the pink versus the brown background there, that's the variety change and I can see it, I can see it in the corn, it just, it looks different there. Another eight rows over is a little bit taller and stuff. So, will be interesting to see if there is a moisture change. The moisture did not drop off in this where we did not spray, these last few rounds have been what didn't get sprayed like I thought it would. It's still running. Well, there we're 23.6, so maybe maybe we're two, two and a half points drier um, where we didn't spray versus where we did. Of course, here it jumps right back up to 25, so hard to say. Uh, not as much of a change as I thought there might be. Um, but we'll see when we get into this other variety. It's also 103 day. They're both 103s, just a little bit different. So what you will see is a drastic difference in the grain quality and the color of this corn. So um, I'll try and get a sample of them side by side, but we are in that candy corn, that just beautiful dark orange stuff now. Uh, and, and not that that corn is bad um, grain quality, but it's, it's just different. good corn it's not great I hope it's not our best but it's good I'm not I'm not I'm not disappointed with it the corn must be getting a little better because that time the, the grain tank got full before Brock got here to unload and we've been unloading at about the same spot so and it is it is getting better there's some there's some good areas through there oh there's our variety change again so everything from here on out is now the 103, the, the different 103 day. Let's see, there's a yield map. There's some really good stuff back in this area. Back in here, there's a dip through the center there. Yeah, nothing jumps out as, you know, defined breaks, but we'll see over the next few rounds whether this variety change jumps out at us. Well, where this corn is good, it is really, really good, but seems to be sort of variable, I guess. I don't know. I mean, 245, 230. Just changes a lot, but we're kind of up and down some dips in here. And I saw it hit 300 in one spot, and then all of a sudden it's down to 220, and you're just like, what the heck? But. It looks pretty good. This looks like really good corn. Amazingly, this area did not get sprayed with a fungicide. We went kind of bordered around this outside of this field, but he started on the south side and worked away across and, and then didn't cover the whole thing. It was kind of one of my side-by-sides, so. Yeah, look at that. Incredible. So we have got a full grain cart up there, or a truck up there. Grain cart is not full, but close. We're gonna make one more round and uh, have have the cart filled up, and then we'll go empty the truck, and then we can empty the cart, check our dryer, and make sure everything is still good. All right, here's where our uh, machine sink is gonna come in nice. So we're gonna fill this cart up. So I have somewhere on here, right here, controls where I can move him forward or back. So we're gonna fill the back of the cart. Oh, I want to go the other way. So 
I can make him speed up a little bit, and then we'll, right there, fill that up a little bit, we'll go a little farther back, and then we can hurry up and race into the front to finish filling the front. Pretty cool. Right there. Not too bad. I could have put a little more on the back, but we should. And we might not get it all on there. We got a little ways to go to get up to the trunk there, so. Always try and end with the combine empty. Might not get there this time. All right, time to go unload a truck. And I saw Phil just pulled in so he can take another load of dry corn out of the overhead and keep our dryer moving. It's a good thing. Well, we got Phil loaded and out of here. We um, got the cart unloaded and we're unloading so it'll be the second truck from there. Brock, I think my finger's gonna fall off. It might, I'm surprised you didn't pass out. Look at, it's bleeding. Oh my, let's just cut it off now. I smashed it when I was working on that belt. And you were mad? Well, it hurt. I had to wrap it in a paper towel so I didn't have to look at it so I could finish. Yeah, because you would have passed out and you would all out. But it still hurts. One day. <sighs> I guess I'll survive if I have to. Anyway, um, we got the slip back on that first load that Phil hauled in. Look at this. Look at this. Whoa. See that number? 14.9. That's, that's, that's perfect. 15 is what we're shooting for. 15 and a half is really okay, but 15 is what we're shooting for. Look at that one right there. Test weight, 57.2. So corn standard is uh, 56 pounds. So that is really good test weight. That's that candy corn. Our FM was a little high. That's a result of us doing all that cycling through the dryer, through the dry, uh, the the wet men under the overhead, and we just moved it too much and cracked it and broke it apart. So, uh, not a big deal on that one. It should improve in subsequent loads. So, as soon as we get the truck empty, we'll get back to shelling corn here. Back to shelling. This is um, this is the slow way of doing it where you got to stop and unload your own trucks. I don't know. Maybe we should be drying into the bin and not worrying about hauling it out right now. But we're trying to get some cash flowing. And uh, we've got fall contracts to deliver on, so. And I don't know if we could combine beans today if we wanted to. We're gonna go look after we get this field done. We don't have that many more acres up here to do, on this side of the house anyway. So, I don't know, we'll see. I need to get my, my duster out. My windows are dirty. Dad didn't use it last night, so it probably won't work anymore. The yield killing pass along trees. Our average will drop here probably, and our moisture will go way up here probably, but it's all right, we gotta get it done. So uh, we're just about got stuff filled up again. Um, trucks full, probably just this round, and then we'll have to go unload. Oh, that tree is too close. I don't like it, I don't like it, I don't like it. Forget it, we're not, we're not gonna get it all. Oh man, it's never good crossing rows. You do what you gotta do protect the combine. We don't like trees. Anyway, um, how many acres we got done here? 45, so we got like 10 acres left. So we'll have to unload stuff one more time and then we should be able to finish it the next time after we unload. Um, we're not getting much sun today. I was really hoping it was gonna be sunny and we could do beans this afternoon. Doesn't look like that's gonna be the case, but when we go and unload, uh, I'll probably go check a bean field and see what it looks like. So, we're getting there. Okay, we got a tricky one here. Oh boy. Yeah. We're testing the limits of <laughs> We're testing the limits of our machine sink here because we're we're on curves. I'm not using auto steer in the combine. And we're curving around these trees and so he's trying to follow me. Plus we've got a full cart and I've got to I've got to bump him forward and back a little bit, but yeah, he's I I got to I got to push buttons. I got to put you down. Well, everything's still running here. Overhead's about empty. Phil just left with his third load, so we kind of expected that. Um, yeah, we'll get this unloaded and we'll try and finish that field. Brock is getting our um, truck unloaded here. I'm going to walk out to this bean field and let's take a look. If it was sunny, I would say we need to go combine beans, but it is not sunny. So I have a feeling we're going to just keep working on corn. Let's go see kind of a question mark as to whether these beans are even mature and ready anyway actually they don't look all that yeah there's a few green ones here it's not terrible these are gonna be good beans based on what we've done these are gonna be really good beans but there's just yeah there's they're sort of green here yet I don't know that these would be ready even if the Sun was out they need another couple of days to finish 
maturing. Look at all the green in there. These aren't going to go. Nope. Nope. Not going to go. Pods are not crack either. They're kind of uh, not soft. I don't know what, what's the word I'm looking for there, but pliable. They don't they don't crack open. It's not dry. I'm sure the beans won't crack. We do have another field that's about 10 miles from here that I think are ready. We should probably look at them before we just drive down there, but um, that's sort of my plan is tomorrow to go there. So we'll keep working some corn off today, and then tomorrow we can go run those beans. Or we wait until Saturday to do them, and we keep running corn the next couple of days. I don't know. We can keep doing corn. I got no problem with that. Dang. Did you guys see this sweet equipment sitting in this field? Look at that tractor. Nice. Ah, this is a cool little spot in our field where you can see down into the dip, the corn on the, the ridge there, and you got the farm in the background. And it's, it's always fun when you're working close to the farm, you can see the grain system and everything. So we're, this is all we got left in this field. We're kind of working these ends off right now, and uh, we'll get it finished up. Phil is done hauling dry corn for today. He's getting the bin ready. We're gonna start drying corn into one of the bins, and he's gonna run trucks for us so we can keep things moving a little bit more. When we get this done, we're gonna jump over to the uh, south side of the house over there, um, but I have to go unload a wheat truck. My watch didn't turn on. At 3.30, it's two o'clock. Problem is, it's in Berkey, and it's 45 minute drive there, so, uh, yeah, we got 45 minutes. We'll finish this, and then I'll have to see. We might have to take a break. My grain cart's waiting for me over there. We've gotta get down to this end, 94%. If we're gonna make it. I don't know. The buzzer will go off here in a second. Grain level four force. We got an inch. We got an inch yet. We're gonna make it. The uh, the machine sink is just a little overreactive going around these curves. So we're following these curves on these ends, right? And uh, you'll see it as we get up here, but. Uh, Little inputs in the steering on the combine make a big input on the steering on the, the green cart tractor, and it's making Brock really nervous. He's he's sitting there like, I got my hands off the wheel, but it's really, I'm really nervous. <laughs> Should see him every time we engage it. Oh, it's funny. Anyway, anyway, we're fine. We're fine. It's all good. We're filling up a cart. See what happens when we start curving up here. See there, the tractors. See the front wheels turn. The front wheels. The front tracks turn a little bit. Adjusting. Yeah, yeah. It'll be fine. Oh, see it. It's just a little reactive. It's scary is what it is because you're not in control and you should be in control. Sprayer blight from our haggy. Last pass of the field here. We are just about done with this one. Um, yeah, it's good corn. It, it is good corn. It's not great corn. So it looks like this field's going to be right around 200. It dropped off when we got to this north side, partly because of all the trees and endros, partly because we didn't spray this with fungicide and it, it showed up. Um, but if you look at the yield map, you can see how bad endros and trees hurt our fields. They just, they, it's, a, it's killer. So. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with it. It's a good start. It's not nearly as impressive as the beans have been, but I, the, that's probably because I had high expectations for the corn and not so much for the beans, and the beans are just outstanding. So uh, we are probably, we no, we are. I know we are. We're going to jump across the lane, work on that corn over there. There's 37-ish acres over there, I think. Um, but I have to run and unload that weed, so... I don't, we'll see if dad wants to jump in the combine for a while, keep it moving or shut it down or I could send Brock, but I'd rather go do it myself. So I don't know, we'll see, we'll figure this out. All right, I'm off. Um, I noticed we've got a stalk stomper bolt broken. Did I show you that already? I might've shown you that already, but I think we need to raise them up. We got too much, too much pressure on those stompers. So dad and Brock are gonna work on that while I go and um, get this weed unloaded. And we'll be back. Maybe they'll be shelling. Maybe they'll still be working on it. I don't know. We'll get it taken care of, though. 
Well, the combines are rolling in the beans down here. I, uh, I'm in that same area where last week you guys were running hard. Lions, Matamora, Ohio area, 20, 25 miles east of our farm. And uh, well, there's more dust up here. I was going to show you this other combine, but I don't know where it's coming from exactly. That guy's out planting wheat. Um, they're still going, but they're, they're, they're way ahead of where we are. Somewhere back there, there was another combine. There aren't near as many soybean fields that aren't ready to combine. Like, here's one that's four or five days away, but uh, we have green beans yet. They got several weeks before they're going to be ready, and there's just not very many of those fields around here. They all look, uh, they all look like they're about ready. So, good for them. I don't know. I, maybe the beans are drier than I think, but we don't really have any beans that are ready or not that we're going to combine today. So, it'll be interesting to see where this stuff is at down to Berkey here. I'm really hoping to come down here in the middle of next week and run the beans so we can get this wheat planted. That's that's the plan. We'll see if, if that plan is possible. The beans have to be ripe. Ah, a little corn going off down here. Another field on the other side of the corner back there. Nice. Truck's here. Said 3.30. It's all right, it's all good. Oh man, this forklift is um, not, as, not as maneuverable as mine. Getting stuff in and out of trucks, but we're making it. I think, I think this was the forklift that we had back at Waldron when I first started selling seed and I used this one like for my whole seed business, which was not what it is now back in 2009 and 10 but still yeah we've come a long ways all right we got our wheat unloaded um i did look at the beans i didn't film it but i'm showing you now still a little green a little green but maybe in a week i would think by the middle of next week wednesday or so we ought to be able to get down here that's kind of the plan that's what i've been hoping for judging by what i'm seeing here i think that will work especially if we get some sunny days which we are supposed to we're supposed to get some sunshine we're starting starting to get a little bit but it just hasn't been as nice we'll see what the hurricane does the hurricane may blow a bunch of clouds up here and keep our crop from ripening i don't know well they clearly got the stock stompers fixed or they took them off ah looks like they got them fixed and uh, I got started opening up the field here. Phil was dumping a truck. Some wet corn from the back on that first one. He had one sample, it was 30%. That's, that's no good, but yeah. We should be able to get this done tonight. We should, keep moving. There's a little ridge there, but I don't see a combine or a grain cart. They must be doing more endros in the back. So I'm just gonna go for a walk and we'll jump in with dad maybe take a look at the ground here and see what stuff looks like had a bunch of finds again i um when i got into that other variety on the north end of this field here i had to adjust the combine a little bit because it um it, it was just shelling harder i had more losses and stuff and in doing so uh when we got back into this candy corn variety which is what we're in here now uh, i probably made it grind it up a little more again so we gotta go back to the settings we had on the other side that we were over there but we shouldn't be throwing any out. This stuff was um, really easy to keep from throwing kernels. Shit. Looks like it again. I don't see a single kernel on the ground. Oh, right there's one. Very little. As I walk back here, I am faced with a dilemma. Do I just go and get in the combine? Or do I buy a good YouTuber and stand outside and get some really, really sweet footage of these two unloading on the go? It's going to be pretty awesome. But I'll miss my ride. You guys win. I should have got the drone. That's what I should have done. Well, oh, there he goes. I say, if Dad doesn't put his auger out, we're not going to get them unloading on the go at all. There we go.
I'm back in the driver's seat. Dad's gonna go find something else to work on. We've got 13 acres done in this field. I believe there is... Come on, monitor. Go to a different page. I believe there's 37 in this field. Remaining, 24. So we should be able to get that done tonight. That should be no problem. Just a few hours. Well, our windows have definitely got dusty throughout the day here. Um, just looking at the yield monitor, this round we're averaging 213. I'm really happy with that. The field average is only 180, but you look at the yield map and look at all of this just terrible stuff in the back there. Endros and trees along the edge and the front ends weren't very good either. So um, yeah, this corn's still gonna be good. We'll get over 200 by the time we're done with it, I'm pretty sure. So that's good. And look at, look at, look at. I got a yield map to show up on our Connect Mobile. The app needed an update, so it's very slowly getting internet from my phone and uh, pulling data and updating. But yeah, we're gonna have we're gonna have a yield map up there. That's what I wanted. That was the whole point. So that's a good deal. Somewhere right in this area is where that boom cylinder broke on the sprayer this spring when we were spraying corn. You guys remember that? I was doing V5 fungicides out here, and all of a sudden my one boom was hanging way back behind me because of the um, the, the cylinder end, the thread stripped out off the bolt that held it in place. Yeah, that was fun. That was out here in this field. We'll have to do some analysis. There's a strip over here by this uh, dike, kind of right in the middle there, that did not get sprayed with the V5 fungicide that will uh, be kind of our telltale spot. The whole field here got sprayed with uh, tassel fungicide, so that's the, that's the variable out here. It's interesting to me how green the leaf tissue is out here. Um, that's a good thing. That means our fungicide worked and it held onto this corn and kept it green longer. We want as much green leaf tissue up until black layer as possible so that it's uh, still packing uh, nutrients into those kernels. You know, we're, we're not dry corn here by any means at 25, 26%. Average for the round is 25, two. Um, but it's, it, it is mature. It's black layered and uh, over there on the north side where we were this morning where we did not spray a fungicide, there was no green left in that plant. There, those, those plants were dead. So, uh, and this is really good corn right here. Like 240, 244, 247. That's phenomenal corn, right? You can see it up here in this front, the dark green. That is really, really good. You know what every good YouTube video has? Drama. So, in order to inject some drama into this video, we have got 13 acres left. 13 acres. That might be a problem. No fuel icons flashing. Two bars. Two bars. It came on with 15 to go, so that means if we get to seven, we'll make it before it goes to one bar. Seven. That's the goal. If we don't get to seven, it's a big risk. I don't know. I don't know if we'll get there. Fortunately, there's a fuel tank across the road, so it's not the end of the world if we decide we have to stop and get some fuel, but drama. Well, Brock just jumped on the radio and told me that the U Harvest system has had its major first uh, lost data of the year, uh, that he unloaded that time, and he knew what he unloaded, but it did not record. So fortunately he caught it, saw it, and he can um, uh, add that, we can add that to our total, but we have to remember that now, that this field is missing 23,000 pounds from the grain car totals. So super frustrating that that keeps happening to us. I, uh, you know, it's in the middle of the field. It's not even the first load of the day, the first load of the field. It's in the middle of the dang field, and all of a sudden it just decides it's not gonna record one in that. I, uh, if you were around for wheat harvest, you know my opinions on the U-Harvest uh, scale system. I'm not a fan. It is about that time. Um, it's not just the camera playing tricks on you. I can't see a dang thing either. That sun glare in there, you can't see anything down there. In fact, I can see it better looking at it through my phone than I can just looking at it. That's 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 crazy, but anyway, we're, um, we're, we're getting there. We still got two bars of fuel showing. And uh, we're down to 8.75, two more acres, and I think we'll be able to finish it on this tank of fuel. That's good.
good drama, I'm telling you. Uh, we're almost up to 200 average, 198 this round, still 208. Our round averages have been anywhere from 210 to 220, um, kind of back and forth here. We had a strip kind of right here that did not get the early fungicide. It's really hard to see it on the yield map, but I think there's a little bit of a difference there. We'll see what happens as we, you know, like this pass over because we did spray here, so, um, yeah, we're getting, we're getting there, but, uh, should finish this up in an hour or so. We'll watch as Brock gets going here. I don't know if you can see in the cab, but watch his hands when he hits the button. Every time. Ah! No, he didn't throw them up. Usually he puts his hand straight up in the air. Every time. He's getting it figured out. Oh, he's going to talk to you. Stress-free. Stress-free. I was telling them to watch you because every time you hit the button, you throw your hands up in the air like, I'm not touching it, I'm not touching it, but you didn't do it that time. Effortless. 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 Yeah, uh-huh. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. We made it to six and a half acres. I think we're good. I think we're good, but the drama is not gone. We are on our last round here, although we do have a few little short rows back here to do. That won't, won't take much, but uh, we're just about got it wrapped up. We're gonna make it. I mean, we're either gonna make it or we're gonna run out of fuel at this point, because I ain't driving up, we're gonna shell up, so yeah. Well, I got the short rows done, and we're on the last strip, but I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little nervous. We lost our last bar. <laughs> We'll make it. We'll make it. We just, we just, we just gotta get to the other end of the field and over to the fuel tank. We'll make it. Oh, we're gonna get there. At least to get a shell. We still gotta get to the fuel tank, but we got the corn out of the field. Excellent. So, I'm gonna let everything clean up a little bit. I'm gonna get out and kick that chaff off of the feeder house. I would get the leaf blower, but I don't want to leave the combine idle that long. So, we're just going to kick it off there and go fuel her up, shut her down for the night. Ooh, look at that. You guys see those fancy lights on that bin? Look at that. They work. Those are my uh, indicator lights. Proximity says we got half a wet bin full. So that'll take a little while to get through. And we have made it to our fuel tank. Fuel her up. Gonna take a while. We'll get our windows before I climb down. This thing is gonna get filthy. But it seems to be working. Fueling. Saving the planet. The uh, This one won't take long. That one though, what's our pump rate of that? 15 gallons a minute? It's gonna take 300 plus, 330. Uh, it's like half an hour I bet to fuel that up almost you can hear the corn going into our bin we're filling this one now we've got a little dry corn in the overhead yet we'll haul that in probably in the morning to the town to fill a contract that'd be 5,000 and uh, we've got three lights worth in our wet bin that's awesome that those are working like that I love those lights uh, dryers just been plugging away all day things are going pretty well on the grain handling side of stuff let's see what was our yeah we were Still 25% across most of that field, so it was one sample that was wetter there. But the dryer's doing what it does. It's rather pretty around here. Anyway, we're waiting for fuel. Well, you can't see anything. All right, well, we had a pretty good day. Um, I don't know how many acres we did on that north side. Had to be close to 30, plus 37, so we did near 70, 65, 70 acres of corn today. That's not too bad. Um, yeah. So tomorrow, the plan tomorrow morning is to go and check a soybean field or a few soybean fields in an area that I think we can do. Uh, it's supposed to be sunnier tomorrow, and I think, I think they'll go. 
Uh, but we need to go and check them before we just show up there with the equipment in case they're not ready. Um, so there's 165-ish acres there. No, 145, something like that. We're going to try and do them all tomorrow. It'll be a big day of doing soybeans, but we're going to try. So uh, that is the plan. We'll see what happens. Phil's going to stay in dry corn for a while tonight. I told him I would come back and shut it off if he wanted me to. He said, no, don't worry about it. Okay, so I won't. So um, I'm going home. Thanks for watching today. Hit that like and subscribe button. If you have any questions, comments, leave them down below. And uh, yeah, we're off to a good start. Corn is, it's, it's good. We're, we're right in that 200 ballpark. Uh, and I don't think that was our best corn. I think we've got better stuff around. That was the stuff that I was really worried about, the stock quality though, and that's all done. So that makes me feel better, breathe a little sigh of relief, I guess. So anyway, we'll see you guys in the morning. Thanks for watching.